campers. This is Darren from My RV Works, and today we're in Port Angeles. We have our fan club with us in the background. Give me a cheer. Yay. Woof, woof. No? Okay. He'll be barking. Um, I have a special something on the menu for today. This furnace is squealing like a pig. So that means the motor's bad. So we have a new motor for it. This is also a, mo uh, a furnace. If you watched my other video on these furnaces, this one was the one that had the burned uh, igniter head and the electrode was touching. Okay, so we've got the parts now. We're going to make the repair. And I figured I'd bring you along with me while we do that. So we're going to be doing three things to it. Okay, um, we're going to be replacing the motor. We're going to replace the burner head. We're going to replace the igniter. So here we go. Okay, so one thing I like to do when I'm working on a furnace is, let me show you what these things look like before I put them on. Um, I've got these little tap connectors, okay? So you see these things right here? You just kind of wrap it around a wire and squeeze it, and it's going to uh, attach onto these wires here. Now, why did I pick these two wires? Okay. Um, there are four wires that come from the coach to feed this furnace, okay? We got a positive, a negative, and then two additional wires. Now these, let me switch around, okay? So I'm going to make it these two wires. Which way do you like it? This way? Okay. These two wires, so here's plus, here's minus. Let's just forget those. You need to make sure there's at least 12 volts there. So these two wires, one is going to be positive, and the other one's going to come back from the thermostat or from the air conditioner or however your coach is wired. That's not what this video is going to cover. But all I need to do is touch these two wires together and it'll make my furnace start. So I know the, furnace, the thermostat's good on the inside, but I want to own this furnace on the outside. Okay, I want to own it so I can start it and stop it at, my, at, at will without having to run in and out of the thermostat inside. So when I tap those two onto these two, two blue wires, and I try to catch them right as they go into the RV. Okay, so I've verified that these two blue wires are coming from the connector that goes into the RV and I'm coming here. One's going to be hot all the time. One's coming back. It'll go through the sail switch and all this kind of stuff. So what I keep in my tool bag is, is this little wire here that's got these little connectors. And so I'm just going to connect right there and right there. Now I am the thermostat. The other end of my wire here, so this is just a tool I carry around in my tool bag. is this 10-foot wire. So when I touch these two together, the furnace is going to start. Ready? Don't make a liar out of me. I hear it clicking. Let me touch them together here. It wants to. Okay, you hear that? That motor. That's... Okay, that's what I wanted to show you, is the motor shot on this thing. Squealing like a pig in really bad shape. So what we're going to cover in this video is how to get to that motor, how to get that motor replaced, and how to put it all back together again. There's a few tricks to the trade I'll share with you as we go along. Now, another thing, if you've watched one of my other videos, there was a furnace issue um, where the burner head was rusted and had some cracks on it. Well, this is, in fact, that furnace. The parts have come in. When I finished that video, I just kind of made it work. Um in a bind. Well, now the motor's burned out on this thing. So we've got three parts for this. We've got the new burner head, we've got a new electrode because the other one was rusted, and we've got a new motor. So to get these, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way into this furnace, but I wanted you to hear that motor to verify, oh yeah, sure enough, that's that's definitely the problem. And I'll show you, show you this little trick here on how to just kind of control it from the outside. You don't have to run in and out, in and out, in and out, on your on your thermostat these two blue wires the ones that come from the coach telling it the furnace to start so let's just jumper them and this is how i do it uh so if you ever are working on an rv and it's got these two little blue connectors you're either a fan and you've watched my video and you do it or you already are doing it or it's one that i worked on so when i'm done you just have it like this and uh, then any other tech that comes behind he sees this and he's like oh fantastic i can just control the furnace from right here and it doesn't hurt anything to leave those on there so that's what i do um now, let me move you back just a little bit. There's a stick on your foot. Okay, now, in here, you're going to see a wing nut. Can you see that wing nut? I'm going to assume you can see that wing nut. So we're going to loosen that wing nut right in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out. This is the exhaust port. The only thing that's holding it in is that wing nut and the grippy part right down there. So now that the wing nuts, or now that the exhaust port's off, I don't want to lose my wing nut, so I'm just going to make it kind of snug. We're going to take the rest of this apart, so we're going to disconnect that. That's the gas energizer 
wire comes from the control board, energizes my solenoids, which opens a gas valve. And I'm going to take a backup wrench, and I'm going to loosen. I'm going to hold the fitting while I loosen the nut. And you know me, I'm a stickler for backup wrenches. So I'm just going to take a pair of adjustable channel locks here to hold that fitting. Yes, I have the right size nuts and sockets, but I just don't feel like walking over there to get them when I can make this work. And we're going to go righty tighty lefty loosey. So let's see here. That's going to go like this, isn't it? I know I got my arm in your face. Sorry. So here we go. There we go. Now the gas is off. Okay, I do hear a little bit of hissing. The trick there is to go inside and turn your stove on until the, it bleeds itself out, or just kind of let it bleed out right here. And uh, now I've got three screws, one in the top, one below it, and one down here. So those two, three screws come off, and this whole thing comes out. So let me get set up for that. Okay, so I've got an extension. That's a quarter inch drive. Which in there. Oh, and the last one. Okay, so I got my three screws out. I got my gas nut loose. I've taken my exhaust port out. This whole assembly should slide right out. Now, I do have a little bit of tightness right here, so let me disconnect. Here's another trick. There's a couple ways to get that off. Another channel lock again. From the inside, I'm gonna see the orientation of this little crimpy thing, and I'm gonna just give it a little squeeze and pull it out there. Okay. And that's one of these things right here. You just kind of squeeze it and it frees it up. So I'm going to give myself some slack. Pull it all the way out there. And this little assembly just comes right on out. Make sure it's not caught on the gas line, which it is. So here we have the problem, if you'll see that. That's what we're going to be replacing, that right there. Okay? And this ties into another video where I went into how we found that problem. And uh, we're also going to replace this electrode because there's some rust up in there. And if we're going to come this far, we might as well replace the electrode as well. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so that was really easy to replace these. Um, so this was the burner that we had taken off. Okay, and it's really simple. It's just these two screws right on the end. Okay, really simple. And um, the part number for that, let me show you the part number for that burner head is right here there's a part number 30268 okay uh marby works is 2269 yay all right now the um the electrode i went ahead and replaced this electrode as well um this one had a little bit of rust uh, let me get the thing to focus on us there focus on this there we go focus on that there we go uh so that had a little bit of rust that's that kind of concerned me. Also, there's some rust down here that, that kind of concerned me. So let me explain the relationship between this electrode and that gas valve. I've explained it so many times in other videos, but I don't know if this is the first video you've seen and this is foreign to you. So your burner head is in like that, okay? So let's keep that orientation. Now we want there to be an eighth of an inch gap between the electrode and the burner head okay now what i do is i take an eighth of an inch allen key and i slide it between those two prongs to verify i got my eighth of an inch simple easy peasy right what's this thing's purpose in life well the other end of this electrode there are two prongs i'll show you on this one right here okay because that one's installed so i've got that one prong that's shiny right there and then the other prong you'll see is welded or soldered you see the little solder spot right there okay uh, so he's ground so the one that i'm holding is ground and this other one the one that's a little bit bigger is actually connected to the wire what's going on with that what's the relationship how does this work this end connects to my control board okay when the furnace fires off go watch my other videos to learn all about the 15 second dwell time and pre-purge and all that kind of stuff so the gas valve is going to open filling this up with gas gas starts to aerate through here this ignites a spark between these two pro between the two prongs there's a, a spark that ignites okay that ignites the gas as soon as a spark ignites and the gas is flowing these two prongs are right in the middle of all that fire okay so the control board sends a small milliamp current through the wire from the control board down the wire that's got the ceramic housing on it and through this gap right here, this eighth of an inch gap, he's going through the flame. The flame has carbon in it. Um, so we're using the, the carbon and the flame as my conductor to carry that milliamp current from one conductor to the other conductor. And then this one down here is grounded. Um, 
if these things do get rusted, you have rust, then you don't have a very good ground, and there could be a problem here with with the control board seeing that you have a good uh, the, the the current is flowing through the electrodes. Okay, um, so the eighth of an inch gap is important. Too much, too little, it's it's not going to give the control board the correct uh, milliamp reading that it's looking for. Okay. Um, so you want an eighth of an inch above the burner head and an eighth of an inch between the two prongs. Okay. And you want to make sure that one of them's got a really good ground and the other one has a nice, good insulated ceramic housing and no rust. And that's why I decided to replace this one because of all of this rust. If it will focus not on the wheel, but on there. So I don't like all that rust on there. Okay. That could fail right where that silvery, uh, rust, uh, weld spot is. And then everything we've done is for nothing. So there you go. Um, next step, we're going to go in here and I'll get a flashlight in here, but we're going to go in here. We're going to start taking this motor apart to get to that squealing pig. All right, stand by. Okay. Now that we've got all of the burner rebuilt and everything, now we're going to start working our way into the motor. Okay. Um, now really all we have to do is there's a, there's two screws on top and two screws on the bottom. So we're going to take those two screws out, pull this off, take this lower wheel off and move the cover and the whole thing's going to come out. So let me show you how easy that is. Uh, now the first thing I'm going to do is just as there was a wing nut on this side, there's going to be one on this side. So we're just going to loosen that wing nut a little bit and this control board comes out. If it doesn't make me a liar. There we are. Okay, I think I got it. Well, here's another trick. Uh, where's my other? It's getting caught on that lip right there. There we go. And then we'll just unplug the wires. Now these wires are already up the roof. Let me show you that. If you look, let me make sure you're seeing this. There we are. So one's gonna be skinnier than the other one, okay? So that's that's an easy way. So you don't have to worry about, oh gee, where do they go? They're one's bigger than the other. The connectors themselves are different sizes to fit that, okay? Um, so now that's loose and Take these four screws off. Okay. And then we're going to take this uh, wheel off. So let me get everything prepped for that and we'll take it to the next step. Okay, what I wanted to show you, I've, I've got a light in here. Um, this, uh, some of you are gonna have an Allen key. Uh, what I'm looking at is this clip, this compression uh, clip. Some of you are going to have an Allen key right there. Some of you are going to have that clip. Be careful; those clips do break. Uh, they're brittle, and if they do, just you know, auto parts store. This slot right here is if you do have an Allen key, you'll take your your Allen tool and stick it in this slot, and find the the vein that's available and reach in there. Now that shaft has a D a flat spot on it. Okay, and so what we need to do is we need to take this side off. We don't need to. This comes out. I've already taken my screws out. Okay, so there's the other blower wheel. Okay, we don't need to take this blower wheel off. We need to take that blower wheel off. Okay, so and then we're going to take that like hose clamp thing off. So let me set you back up and show you how we're going to do all that. Okay, so we've got this loose um, and uh, we can take that loose. That gives us a little bit more space. And we can even, if we wanted to, we can unplug, this is your sail switch. We can even unplug these two wires and pull this out of the way and uh, get totally get free of this. But I don't know that we need to do that. I'm gonna work on this clip right here. Um, so, right angle tool here. Okay, so it's just one of these little compression connectors. Put that in my little toolbox. And then you gotta be very gentle with these. You don't wanna force them. The, the key here is patience. I've lost a half an hour getting these things loose. But uh, there we go, I can feel it coming. A little bit more, a little bit more, hold on. It wants to, there we go. Okay, so we got lucky. So we take this wheel off, okay? And um, so what that's gonna do is, that's the only side you need to take off to get the motor out. Okay, this, I, you don't, you notice I'm not trying to take this, this blower wheel off. I'm just taking this side off. So now that hose clamp is the next thing we need to take off. Get my tool set right here. All right. And 
watch this trick. See, now we took the, um, the control board off, and this whole motor is going to slide right out of there. How about that? There's the old motor, okay? So we just pulled the whole thing out this side. And now that it's off, we'll get this blower wheel off. Does that make sense? All right, so let me unplug the ground. All right, let's replace the motor. Okay, we got the old motor out, and I got the new motor in. Um, what I'd like to hear is some discussions on how, if you're a tech or something, uh, your tricks to get these old, these blower wheels off these old shafts. Um, you didn't need to hear me cuss and discuss getting the old one off, but uh, it was a bit of a pain. I lost quite a bit of time trying to get the old one off, but um, do be careful when you take these off. If you crack it, you're going to be buying a new one of these things. They're about fourteen, fifteen dollars. Um, I stock them in my service trailer because there are times where I just the $14 that the wheel cost is cheaper than my time to fix a thing. So sometimes I'll just, if I'm going to come out and do a motor, I'll just buy one of these blower wheels with it. Um, because like I said, it's sometimes cheaper just to break this thing and, and put a new one on there. And that also is true of, of these smaller wheels. Um, sometimes just break the thing. Now, having said that, sometimes these are metal and not plastic. So I do stock the plastic ones. Metal ones I have a little bit more luck with. Uh, I might try heat or that PP blaster, uh, this product here. Um, just let it soak. That's what I did on this one. I just let it soak and it finally just came off. Uh, now here, I don't know if you can see that, it's got this little flat spot. Um, and that goes in there like that. And then we take our compression connector, um, ring compression ring, and it's like a gas line. So that's why I say you can get them at auto parts stores. Where did I put my, uh, you know, those pliers? Anybody see them? Where did I put them? All right, Luke. Oh, you know what? They're right there. So now what I'm going to do. Okay, so now it's a whole lot easier to get to everything and I can put my connect compression connector right on this way uh, and I don't have to fight it when it's inside the, um, the housing there. There is one more thing I want to show you on this. Uh, so there's my ring connector. Let me show you something inside of here. It's the high limit thermostat. I want to show you that while we got this motor out. And uh, so let me do that real quick. Okay, so I want to give you an orientation as we go in. Uh, like Google Earth, we're going to zoom in. Now, we had to remove the motor to get to here, but if we look inside, that is our high limit thermostat right here. Uh, we've got the two wires feeding it. Now, the purpose of the high limit thermostat, um, let's say that there's ductwork in the coach and there's a rug, dirty clothes, uh, who knows, kids' toys, but it's blocking the airflow from the furnace feeding the warm air into the coach and that heat cannot escape from this heat exchanger. So all that heat backs up inside of the heat exchanger and that is what's gonna trip this high limit thermostat. Um, now, um, it will reset itself, but that high limit thermostat is daisy chained with the sail switch. So let me show you how that circuit is wired um, because maybe some of you might have this issue. Okay, so on this, I'm gonna do this with one hand. Here's the back of the, oops, there you go. Here's the back of this blower wheel, okay? Now this is your sail switch, okay? Now, if you've watched my other videos, the purpose of the sail switch is it's a proof switch. It's gonna to prove to the control board that there's airflow. And the way it does that by, is by blowing this arm down. You hold the click, okay? Now, the control board needs to see a change of state. So if your sail switch is stuck, for any reason, I have seen them stuck with dog hair or, or uh, mud daubers. So if this cell switch is stuck in this position, the control board will not allow ignition to take place. It needs to see this, this change of state, a logical zero to a logical one, uh, before it will reignite, before it will allow ignition, okay? So look here, we have a blue wire and a white wire. Now, let me pull this out, okay? Um, so, uh, now I'm going to mention this. When I'm looking at this furnace, you'll see I've had these connectors on. Somebody's worked on this before and they had they had one of these types of connectors um, connecting these two white wires. And what they had effectively done is bypassed 
that high limit thermostat. So it's possible the high limit thermostat has failed, and that's why they just crimp this on. But it's one of these connectors that if you crimp it on, it's just going to bust these two wires together. So I took that out. If, you, if you're careful and you look at the earlier part of this video, you might see it in there. And as I'm looking at this furnace, I see all these connectors, and I noticed that, and I knew that that kind of a connector was not from the factory. That's not an OEM connector from Atwood on this. Um, so it's possible that the high limit thermostat is set and they didn't want to go through the problem of taking the motor out like we just did to get to it. Um, so I've wired it the way it's supposed to be and we're going to be keeping an eye on that high limit thermostat back there, but that's a safety feature. We don't want this thing getting hotter than it should be. Um, so we'll be looking at that as we rebuild this thing. But we're going to leave this sail switch on a white wire. Okay, th this this Hmm. Let me make sure I'm explaining this correctly. This blue wire feeding the, the sail switch is coming from the thermostat. Okay, so the thermostat calls for heat. It goes to my sail switch. We know about that. It's going to leave on this white wire right here. And the white wire, if we follow it up, it's going to go back to my high limit thermostat. And I'm, or, yeah, high limit thermostat. I'm going to come back on this other white wire. And then I'm going to go into my control board. Here's my wiring harness that feeds. There it is. It feeds my control board this white wire right here so this white wire took a journey it uh it started at the thermostat went through the high limit or stop started at the thermostat went through the sail switch went through the high limit thermostat now he's coming in and at this point he's telling the control board that my high limit thermostat has not tr opened it's like a toaster it's it's got too hot so the high limit thermostat has not opened in my sail switch yeah, i'm proving that i have airflow so i hope all that makes sense um and that has nothing to do with replacing the motor but since we have the whole thing taken apart i wanted to show you all that and then also some of this wiring was not the correct way so i've made it correct um so let me set you back up on the tripod we'll put the motor back in all right okay let's get back to replacing this motor now that we've gone through all that i hope that was helpful for you um, if you just wanted to watch the video to replace a motor, you got a bonus. So here's our motor. We, le we, we left off with our little key, and I wanted to show you the high limit thermostat, and then we went off a big tangent on how the whole thing's wired. And then I discovered that the wiring wasn't even correct. So um, now what we're going to do is uh, there's a, a bit of a trick I do here. I'm going to put this on there first, okay, and you'll see why in a second. So now this little flapper sometimes they have a sticker that goes on this and this one fits there okay stay there we go so we're gonna go in like this there we go now let me get my little hook here and scoop this thing over okay So not, it I had to fight with it, but it's easier to have fought with it than to open up this thing and snake it around behind the backside. So we're gonna make sure he's seated really well. And we're gonna put her, you know, our tools. So we're gonna make sure he's seated really well. Okay, so we've got our motor in. And what we're going to do is put 12 volts on it to make sure that it's going to work um, before we get too much farther down the trail. Because if it doesn't work, I'd like to know that now. So I just put 12 volts right here, and the motor is going to spin up. Okay, so with my 10-foot my cable, I've, I've alligator clipped on to the leads to go to the motor, and I've got my 12-volt battery pack that goes on my tools. And let's see, we're going to find plus and minus. This side's minus, here's plus. I'm going to make sure the wires are not touching, and let's see what happens. Sounds a lot better. Okay, so that's very reassuring. So now, let's start reassembling everything. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is, is put this back in here with this clip. Um, you don't need to watch me do that, but that's the next thing, okay? Okay, so now we have the blower wheel on this side. We have the blower wheel on this side. we got our little tension clamps on there, and we want it to make sure that everything works. So at this point, I'll put this cover back on, put this back in, slide it all together, and do a run. So here we go.
Okay. Now we're going to clean up some of these wires here, but you saw how four screws, I verified that by spinning my rotor, it's not rubbing on anything. I've put this all back together again. And so now I'm going to take my uh, jumper wires and these two wires that we started with, I'm going to touch them together and become the thermostat, see if we can't get this thing to run and start for us. Okay, so now we got our wires in here. Uh, we've, we've got everything back together. I even went ahead and put this back in and tightened it up. And uh, so now we're gonna do our tests. We're gonna connect these together. Um, again, I'm the thermostat. It's doing its 15 second or so pre-purge. And uh, we have a little green light down here. I don't know if you can see that green light. Yeah, you can see that green light. <coughs> and uh, we're gonna watch to see what that's gonna do. When he tries to ignite, he's gonna flicker red for us. didn't flicker red but we definitely have heat coming out so now we've got a working furnace uh, it's very quiet now so at the end of the day we've replaced our motor and our igniter and our burner um, and uh, so yeah let's button all this up now yay so I'm gonna break this it's taking away the thermostat the next step is to go inside and test it on the real thermostat and uh, make sure everything's gonna work and I'll put some tie wraps and make this all pretty Okay, well, there we go. I hope that was useful for you. We went through a lot of things. I covered a lot of different topics, but uh, the takeaway was how to pull this motor out. I've seen a lot of people, when they want to replace their motor, they, re they pull the whole furnace out. And uh, the big key here is it's not necessary. So if this was helpful to you, thumb it up for us. That really does help us. And subscribe, share it with other folks. And uh, happy camper, say my RV works. And I think we're going to have a happy, warm camper here. So um, we'll see you on the, next, on the next service call. This is Darren from Fort Angeles, Washington, signing off. See you next time.